Today we'll make an interesting video about the color calibration and how color calibrator actually works and few adjustments what you can make to the color calibrator to make it work better. And also I will print the additional negative from my trip to Venice, Italy and all of the money what I collect in my web shop will go to the charity to the Ukraine. So let's go to the darkroom. <laughs> I was waiting in the undertow Set a drift with fair away light I have a plan for today and I want to show how the color calibrator works. So let's start with the choosing proper negative and I will use the negative from my trip to Venice. Because I develop it myself, I know it should be good with the color and I also have a negative scan. So we can compare the negative scan to print what I make. Lately I start to clean up negatives with a special tissue for removing anti-static. And also I clean the hole in larger and the carrier. And because today we need to print 35mm, I will exchange the lens from 80mm to 50mm. At the first step I want to find the good magnification for this image and start with the focusing on the grain. This image is not really sharp and unfortunately I have a lot of camera shake but we can easily focus on the grain and start with the calibration procedure. So the color calibrator actually have a four buttons. Three of them is the selection of the channel and one of them is the power button. So the big knob it's actually timer and if you have a calibrated sensor you can choose the time for good exposure on your color calibrator. So starting with the cyan channel you have these three knobs and this is your calibration setting. So if you have a good balanced photo you can copy the setting on the color calibrator and I will show this correction at the end of the video. But to make the copy of previous exposure I just need to find the center of this image on diffused image and it will give me maximum of my intensity. And you need to understand I will work with the two different modes and I will just compare results what I have. So the first setting I will include the filter what I have in the back side of my enlarger. So it's basically 50 magenta and 50 yellow filter. With the insert of this filter and the cyan channel on 60 so you can use the 60 60 60 setting and you will have less light so it means you will have more open aperture. So when I set up the enlarger I will just search for the needle position with the middle exposure changing the aperture or cyan channel. And when I found the proper settings for each channel we can move on and write down all the settings in a lab book to compare them to the different measurement what I will make next. So for the next measurement I actually want to remove the filter from the back side of the enlarger. And also I want to remove the cyan filter from the enlarger. So it means I will filter only magenta and yellow filters. In this case in the integration box of my enlarger I have a less filters and my optical path is a little bit more clear. Downside of this approach I actually need to use almost completely closed diaphragm on the lens. And the enlarger lens is actually flat field lens and they work better with the almost open aperture so it's a little bit closer than like middle position on the lens. So let's write down the settings for the second calibration and as you can see here without the filter I have almost symmetrical settings so it's a 65 62 0. So I also have uh, access to the scientific tool which can measure the intensity of the light with a really high precision. In principle this is a crazy expensive light meter and you can precisely measure the power output from the full range starting from 400 nanometers to 1000 nanometers in the wavelength. If you're using a laser source you can make adjustments for intensity on specific laser wavelength but what is important for us at the moment I just want to see the full output from the sensor and just measure how much power we have from the enlarger with a good magnification and the full equilibration. And for me it's still a surprise because this retro old school electronics from Philips 
It's actually a crazy precise measurement instrument. Yes, in comparison, this sensor doesn't have any condensing lens and the Philips calibrator have it. But anyway, power, what it's actually landing on this sensor is a range of the microvats. So in reality, this answer is exactly the same what you have inside the Philips car calibrator. But you also have uh, three different wheels with the color filters, which is actually only passing the light which corresponds to the proper channel. And you need to understand, because we're talking about the filtering, this is RGB colors. And paper also sensitive to RGB color. For these tests, I want to make the new solution for my Eric for chemistry to be more precise and to easily compare two results with the fresh chemistry. This chemical kit from Tetanol contains two solutions with the two parts of each. So it's the two parts of color developer and two parts of bleach fix. It's pretty easy to make the small amount of solution. I'm actually using half liter of solution, so I just dissolve 50 milliliter of solution A and 50 milliliter of solution B in 400 milliliter of uh, distilled water. For this chemistry, actually never use the tap water. It will dramatically remove the shelf life of your chemistry. And also it can lead to some residue on top of your paper, which you don't really want. And in comparison, you can buy the distilled water in any type of supermarket or car shop or something like this. Because I have a, a lot of years of experience in my profession, I can carefully load all the chemicals and do not spill anything, but be careful where the goggles and the gloves. So meanwhile, we're heating up the chemistry to 35 degrees to make uh, experiments with uh, different types of settings. And meanwhile, our chemistry is heating up. We can discuss how actually paper works. So Array 4 paper is actually sensitive to three different wavelengths of light and it's designed to be sensitized with the laser diodes or with the LED lights. If you have a narrow LED light or laser point source, you have a greater separation between the channels on the photofilm, you have a greater contrast, better reds, and most importantly, you have more control in the color separation and color correction. And as you can understand, all of these settings is actually relevant to the scanning of the film. So the good professional scanners actually have the same system. It's not a white light source, it's actually a mixture of three different wavelengths with a narrow band. And for film photography, it's actually quite important to have an infrared channel band. So let's quickly compare two exposures what I make and make our decision about the corrections. On the left side, I have a exposure without the filter, and on the right side, I have exposure with the filter. They have completely different settings, but they was calibrated to zero on my color analyzer. And as you can see here on the right side, we have a strange yellowish tint on the whole picture, so it's basically yellow correction required there. And on the left one, we actually have a little bit of magenta tint. I will put my samples in my lab book and let's decide what steps we will make next. So far I cannot find any good information about the wavelength of the filters what I have in larger. It's so small amount of information on the internet, how it actually works and what you can do with the different filtration and different wavelength and how it's actually related to the modern paper. Because as you can understand, the older paper have a little bit different shifts and a little bit different synthesizing layers. So if somebody knows, just put it in the comments. It will be really interesting to know. So for my left picture, I have a setting 65, 60 to zero, and it's actually F16 and 7.5 seconds of exposure. On the right side, I have a 76, 51 and 74, and I have a filter installed, so it means it's more than 100. But in the same time, it's 10 seconds of exposure with the F8. For my taste, picture on the right looks too yellow, so it means we need to increase the yellow filter. At the moment it's 76, so probably it will be around 90. And we have completely not symmetrical settings on this one. And for next experiment, I will output the filter from the enlarger and we will try to make the same settings what I have in the lab book and from there we will try to make a corrections. 
So I already know I need to make the corrections on the magenta channel, so I need to increase the magenta filtration. And in this case, if we increase the magenta channel, it means we will increase the filtration and remove the magenta cast. For the test, I will make one more additional experiment. And the experiment is actually using diffuser. You need to understand that diffuse light in this case will create the blend of all of the picture and create the blend of all of the colors. And in principle, in this case, we will get the patches with a tint on the gray channel. And in reality, the color analyzer only sensing and calibrated to neutral gray. So in reality, if you have a strange picture with an unknown cast or your eye is not still trained, it's much better to use a diffuse filter and create just the gray patches because on a pure color it's much easier to distinguish in which direction you have a cast. So take a look on these two samples. So top one it's actually with the diffuser and the lower one it's exactly the same settings and you can easily correspond the tints on a gray channel there with the diffused picture and on the top side you probably can't say where's the middle because it's a gradation from a little bit magenta to completely green. And because I make a steps with a 5 on the channel it's relatively easy to set up and the lowest step on the enlarger is actually 2. As additional experiment you can find the better position and make steps by 2 in between of the two patches. So from these two experiments I will select the patch number 3 and probably add a little bit more and try to make first test print. Not sure if we will have another correction on top of this one because for my eye it looks still a little bit greenish and not purely grey. But for sake of experiment I just want to print out the what I select from these two sets of patches and print completely neutral picture and probably make decisions later. Let's expose 7.5 seconds on this exposure and make a quick development run with the color developer and the bleach fix each for 45 seconds. I'm using the same chemistry so it should be exactly the same results as before. And when I have a final print and we can check if my color correction is right after a quick washing cycle under the running water. First thing what I can see, I don't really like the composition because on the right side I have a two small patches which actually distracting me from the picture. And after quick drying let's check the print result. The first thing what I can see, it's probably not enough density because negative have a crazy contrast levels and I have completely greenish shadows on this picture and not enough details in the sky. But what is actually curious about this print, I have much more details and rendition from the print in comparison to the scan. Not sure if it's related to dynamic range of the scanner or it was just badly scanned. So I want to make a small correction and put it a little bit back on the magenta channel and put the 10 seconds to increase the density on the sky. So after next exposure, let's quickly develop the sprints and run the color developer run and with the Blix fix run for 45 seconds. And this print should be close enough and it's more artistic development because we changed the neutral position to our taste. And I expecting more balanced prints because I crop the sides on the right side to remove this two patches of the black. I increase a little bit of density of the print so I have more details in highlights and I still have a lot of details in the shadows on the boat. And because I shifted a little bit from a greenish channel a bit to magenta, I have good balance of colors so my shadows is still a little bit greenish but this is not overkill if you compare to left to right. Here I have completely green and on the left one it's more balanced and looks more real. Also because I increase exposure time I have more details here on the building and I also don't really have this green tint in the shadows anymore in the middle of the picture. So far I really like the results and if you compare it to the negative scan I really like the result what I get from these prints. I will tape one of the prints in my lab book and let's check my progress and what steps I make to achieve this print. 
So I start with the initial two settings and I select it from both of them. I select the settings without the filter because it looks more symmetrical and it looks like I have more color definition there. Not sure why and probably in future I need to run one more test and compare if I can make the same corrections and get the same color from the two brands. So as the next step I check the magenta channel and I select the middle position on my gray patches and you can see it's the same position on my color patches with the structure. So we land on this print and from there I move on to a little bit more magenta prints and I will increase the settings to 10 seconds and let's recalibrate my sensor. So for this one you need to put the sensor in the middle of the screen again and with the maximum intensity you need to find the 10 seconds you need to set up the 10 seconds on the wheel and from there you need to adjust the calibration wheels so in my case i land on these settings so my cyan channel is kind of in the middle the yellow channel almost full and i have a problem with the magenta channel probably filter is too dirty or old or degraded so i have not enough Kind of a multiplication for this channel so i already know i need a 10 more on magenta filtration in the next brands so that's it for today thank you for watching and see you next videos